G'day everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to the end of May. Welcome to the May Power Rankings um, on Tier Maker at the moment. And as you can see, kind of updated the tiers a bit, but the number one seed, we've got the contenders, the finals, the not quite there or the not there, uh, and then we've got shithouse. Sometimes you just got to be honest in this world and call it shithouse. But before we get started, YouTube is going to hopefully ramp up again with a mixture of content. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'd really appreciate that. I apologize to all of those that there was a bit of a lull between work and some new projects, which I'll uh, talk about as I do the tiers. Um, as kind of, you know, just put it on the back burner for a little bit, but still love doing YouTube, still love making YouTube videos, and I'm going to keep doing them. So stick around. Uh, and let's go from there. But I usually do these in alphabetical order uh, as they appear on the screen because... I'll reshuffle them uh, as we go anyway. So let's get stuck into it. And then hopefully you guys enjoy. So we'll start with Adelaide. Um, Adelaide are actually one of the more important teams. Now, they've had some good wins. And they've looked a little bit poor. They dropped Riley O'Brien, justifiably I might say. I don't think I can put them in the shithouse tier. Not yet anyway. Let me have a think about it as we go through. But I'm going to say not there. Not there. Uh, Brisbane, definitely a contender. I do have a qualm about Brisbane, and that is their defense. Um, they look lost behind the ball at times. And I don't know what's happened to Harris Andrews in the last two years, but he's looking a shell of his All-Australian self, which is not fun. Carlton now, if Harry McKay and Jacob Wiedering are both fully fit, they're in the contender category. They're both not. And Wiedering's AC joint injury puts them... Uh, as the finals, are they going to be the best of the finals teams? My instincts say maybe, but I don't think I could put them in the contender with Weedering out for six weeks. And McKay, I think, out for another two, potentially. Someone in the comments will correct me about that. Uh, Collingwood. They've got a really good draw. As I sit here now, loot that loss to West Coast, I think, is going to cost them a final spot. But they're definitely better than Adelaide. But I'm saying not there. No, you're, they're better than Adelaide. There we go. So that works there. Before we get to the Bombers, just quickly, uh, you'll notice that, well, hopefully you'll notice that yesterday I put up a little podcast segment that we did. So I'm now um, working with RWP FM, Peninsula Sport Radio, or Peninsula Radio, uh, with their sport guys working on a number of projects. The Great Footy Debate was the first podcast that I ever had. Um, and that was with Smithy, who you've seen on the channel. Uh, and segments of those will be going up uh, on YouTube a bit, along with TikTok. We're going to get TikTok going, which will be pretty cool. Um, so check those out as well. They're not going to have the massively clickbaity titles, I don't think. So if you do subscribe or you are subscribed and you're watching this now, click that bell notification uh, and keep up to date with those because they're really good chats, really good discussion points, and we do disagree on a lot of things. So check those out, and there'll be another um, thing coming Wednesday or Thursday. So that should be pretty cool. And, of course, normal YouTube videos should be coming as well. I'm hopefully going to get a tips video up this week. So there's that little spiel. Let's go to the Bombers. Need I say more? They're 2-9, and nine and they don't have soul. And their leadership is poor. And they can't move the ball forward. And, well, they've had injuries. Yeah, so have Carlton. You don't see them complaining. Yes, Carlton are in a much better list. But the Bombers, when it comes to expectation, they've nosedived. See the Bombers fly down, just like the logo there. Which is a bit ironic. But they're not in a good shape at the moment. And Bombers fans know it too. I know a lot of fantastic Bomber fans. And they're pretty pessimistic about where the list is at. They've sort of made up their defense as they've gone along. They desperately need a second key tall. I don't think Dan McStay is the answer. But McStay at Essendon makes a lot more sense than Collingwood because at Collingwood, he'll be the number one tall, whereas at the Bombers, he'll be the number two behind Peter Wright and and uh, Harrison Jones will become the third. That could work. That could make a, a lot more competitive forward line, but 600 grand for six years, which is what McStay is expected to go for. Jesus. All uh, right, Freo, welcome to the contender circle. Now, this is... If Freo beat Brisbane... I know they just beat Melbourne. But if Freo beat Brisbane, they swap. But the problem we've got is Brisbane are kicking a shitload of high scores at the moment. And I know Freo have got the best defense in the league, but I am going to put Brisbane just in front. And that could age horrifically. 
I understand that, but as I sit here, 31st of May, this is the end of May. Freo was the win of the year. They dominated the Demons in that second half. That third quarter was outstanding. I don't think I can bring myself to put them ahead of Brisbane just yet. But if they beat Brisbane, then when you beat Melbourne and you beat Brisbane, you're, you're, you're there. You're second. Um, I know people will argue first, and I can understand that. Um, but for now, I think, I think third's a pretty good spot. Uh, this is going to be controversial, I think. But I'm putting Geelong behind Carlton. And the reason that I'm doing that is Geelong are going to finish top four this year because I think they've got seven of their last ten at GMHBA Stadium and they'll win six of those. Um, so they'll all, they'll, there's your 12 wins and they'll get a, a, a couple more as we go through the year. So they'll probably finish fourth or fifth and they'll suck everyone in again. But they look susceptible, uh, susceptible I should say, down back. They need Hawkins and Cameron to fire. They've kicked 41% of their goals this year combined so they're not getting the output from other players which is not good enough and with an aging midfield I've got more faith in Carlton's midfield I've got more faith in Brisbane and Fremantle's midfield at this point Brendan Parfitt's had a bit of a down year Mitch Duncan can't get fit Cam Guthrie had a horrific four or five weeks before getting himself back into a little bit of form dangers hurt Selwood I think's been fantastic for big parts of the year but I Geelong just look like a big big trap to me um Gold Coast, oh, geez, they're in ripping form, and they're going to dismantle North tomorrow. Mm. I'm going to put them here for now, but they'll be the last team I talk about, because I'll see where I'll put everyone else, and see if I can go from there. But I'll leave them there just for now, that was a really impressive win over the Hawks. Uh, the Giants, they're not there, but they're better than Adelaide. Heaps better than Adelaide. Uh, beat them at Adelaide Oval, which helps, and you'll probably say with that logic, Freo should be above Melbourne, and I understand where you'd be coming from there, but the Giants under Spike McVeigh, they've looked freer, they're moving the ball a lot better, but they've still got a lot of list problems, and I'm not going to get sucked into the, uh, what's it called? The coach, the standing coach. I can't think of the name. Caretaker coach, that's the one. Caretaker coach, I don't buy into that. They've still got a lot of work to do in the offseason, so the Giants, they're not there. I'll put Collingwood ahead of them. Uh, my Hawks, uh, not there, but we're better than Adelaide. Um, I understand that where you're coming from, how does a team beat Brisbane, but lose to the Gold Coast, and the conditions in Darwin didn't help the Hawks. No recognised Ruckman didn't help the Hawks, but this is a team that will live and die by attacking through the corridor, the Hawks' defense looks terrible, and if they can't get any momentum forward of the ball, and they can't score, they're going to get smacked, and that's what happened. R Mitch Lewis, big fan of. Jacob Kaczynski, big fan of when he's actually allowed to play centre-half forward, uh, when he's made to be in a makeshift ruckman. He can look lost at times, but I thought he battled really manfully on the weekend, and once we get you know Reeves and Lynch, who should be coming back this week, back the Hawks will be okay. I can't put them ahead of the Giants. I kind of want to. Giants um, are lower on the ladder, but... Actually, am I getting sucked into the caretaker coach? Um, that might be something to look at at the end. But the Hawks there, I'm comfortable with that. Their best can beat anyone. I think they're 2-4 and four against top 8 teams at the moment, which is pretty handy. Um, also goes to show that the first half of the year, six top 8 sides, you'd probably be... I'm pretty happy being 4-7. and seven. Considering we're two and four against top teams and two and three against um, teams not in the eight, so you know that's kind of where the Hawks are at at the moment, and I can live with it. I am patient and riding the bumps with a grin. Don't overreact to one loss. Now I think we can react justifiably to the Dockers because they looked amazing, but come on, Melbourne have won. I think twenty six of their last twenty nine. Let's, let's stop it. You know. They're the best team in it. May going down was huge. Um, take nothing away from Freo, but take nothing away from Melbourne. You know, I don't like the fact that we react like this. Oh, we found the blueprint to beating them. Have you, though? Have you really? Are you really going to get Petrarca ill? Are you really going to get Stephen May concussed in the same game? Are you really going to have all these things go your way if you're not a Freo, if you are a Gold Coast or a Collingwood? No, no, you're not. So keep it as it comes. Melbourne's still number one. Uh, no. 
Jeez, have that as a little frame bit. But North, yep, there she is. Um, the recruit. I, I'll quickly touch on the recruiting department. So, I think they walked out. The reason why Finnegan, I think, walked and then came straight to Hawthorne is if you leave a job, and I work in the employment industry, uh, in my actual job, and I've noticed that everyone that walks out of a job and walks straight into a new one is they're now being allowed to do the job that they're hired to do. So I get a really big feeling that Norse recruitment people were not allowed to do what they wanted to do, and you can highlight Will Phillips over Logan McDonald. All you like, was it the wrong call? It looks like it in hindsight, but they didn't take a tall... Uh, for the rest of the draft or the draft before that. They haven't drafted one since Nick Larkey, uh, you could say. And they didn't replace Robbie Tarrant, which makes no sense at all. Ben McKay needs help. Aiden Core is not that guy. And they'll go into the mid-season draft and they'll probably take Wade Dirksen, who is the Peel Thunder tall forward, or they'll take Josh Carmichael, um, a midfielder. You know, there's no centre-half back that's putting their hand up. Do they take James Blanc from Box Hill? Personally, I think they should. As a Hawthorne fan, that would suck because I want him at the Hawks. But it's the best decision for their list right now. Do they go with it? Hard to say. But they've got plenty to work on North. Their list is a shambles. Uh, Port. Ooh. I think they're ahead of Gold Coast. I think Port are okay. I know they, they put the queue in the rack against the Bombers. They, they really did. Uh, Dixon back is huge, and they've just got to get it together, and, and they'll rock it back into it. Um, I think if they don't make the finals from here, Ken Hinkley needs to go. Um, take a year off, get yourself right, and coach again. But they've got the pieces there. They need Scotty Lye set back. Um, in the mid-season draft for Port, I think they should take a Ruckman. Now, whether that's Max Ramston, Liam Reedy, Colin Ballenden, um, or the East Perth boy, is it Teekel, I think? Uh, Brian Tinkle. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't got the name in front of me. So I think they need to do that and, and shore up a bit of a ruck spot. But their 22, their best 22 on paper is a cohesive 22. So where is it going wrong? I think it's the coach's box. But the kind of team that they are, they are a finals caliber team. Uh, Richmond, they're definitely a finals caliber team. I'm going to slot them straight in there. So that's the eight. So I think I am going to have to move Gold Coast down. Because uh, St. Kilda, Sydney, and the Bulldogs are definitely there. So let's put Gold Coast down here, which is pretty stiff. I might have to think about Port as well, but uh, let's talk to the Tigers. So they're looking okay, Richmond. They do look like the one team susceptible to an injury if they are in, uh, if an injury does happen to a Rewalt uh, or an Ancurvis, maybe. Uh, they look like they would be in a lot of trouble. I really like Josh Gibkiss. I loved him coming out of the draft, as you guys know. And to go from there, I think the Tigers have just got to get healthy. They, you know, they've got a good twenty-two, but they need the twenty-third player, which is health. But they look okay. Um, I'm not overreacting or underreacting to every performance that they have. They're kind of the team that, you know, just follow the journey and, and see where it takes them. But I can't get a read on Richmond at the moment. They could finish. Fifth, I wouldn't be surprised. They could finish 12th. I wouldn't be surprised. So we'll wait and see, but I'm going to back them in until they uh, until they stuff it up. Yep. So you'll have seen in my previous video on the Grey Footy debate, we talked about can St. Kilda win the flag. AJ and Smithy said no. I said yes, and I stand by it. The Saints have got everything in their best 22 to win a flag, they've got good outside run, inside bulls, Jack Steele's got to come back, Max King's a star, Tim Membry's that kind of centre-half forward that could bob up and kick four in a grand final and really sneak up on you. They've got a good array of smalls. Uh, is it going to be this year? Who knows? But I am extremely comfortable in having St. Kilda in the contender bracket. They're real, and they're real tough as well, and I like where they're headed. But eight and three, you know, Smithy said in that video, it snuck up on him. And I think it snuck up on a lot of people. They're in fine, fine form. Uh, the Swans. Uh, I think the Swans. The Swans better than Geelong, yes. Sydney are better than Geelong. So Port, you can get relegated. Oh, do I really need to have eight? Surely I can say in May a few teams can make finals. Yeah, I think so. Gold Coast could move again. Let's see. Um, but the Swannies, I mean, they're young. 
and their top end talent. I mean, Buddy's a star, superstar. He's going to be an AFL legend in the Hall of Fame. I like their young talent. Um, they're building nicely. My instincts say they're still a year away. Um, the McCartan brothers, I think Tom's a star, but um, Paddy just needs to be fit. And again, they're only an injury or two away from completely capitulating, whereas you look at Melbourne, Brisbane, and even Frio, although Alex Pierce goes down, they might be in a bit of trouble. Um, St. Kilda have proven they can play without steel. So I don't think Sydney could play um, without a Paddy McCartan long-term. I don't think they could play without a Parker as well, I mean. I don't mean they'd capitulate, but they would struggle. Uh, they would need them all there. So I really like what the Swannies are doing. They'll draft beautifully. Matty Roberts, you know, he didn't have a perfect debut, but him and Angus Sheldrick, they've brought in this year and they've done jobs at times, and Matty Roberts has done really well at VFL level, so they've got plenty of youth coming through, and even guys like Errol Goulden's in a little bit out of form, but give him a couple of chances, and he'll take them every time. I'm putting it West Coast last. North is shit with a shit list. West Coast is shit with a good one, and I'm sick of the excuses. All we hear, all we heard when West Coast won the 2018 Grand Final... Oh, it's not being spoken about. Vic Bias. Vic Bias. All you do is talk about the Victorian clubs. As your Vic Bias working for you now, West Coast? Because now we're talking about you because you are in a hole. Oh, but COVID. Understandable. Understandable. Oh, injuries. Nah, everyone's got injuries. Oh, but we've lost by 100 points twice. North haven't. You've got Shuey, Gaff, Yo. Yeah, injured, out of form, injured, out of form. But where exactly is West Coast's list at? They're probably going to move off Gaff at the end of the year. They need to. They need to keep McGovern, and they need to keep Darling, because uh, Kennedy's sort of going. I can understand wanting Barris to stand up, but you'd be then relying on Brett Bazo, who hasn't had the senior experience. Jack Williams, up forward, hasn't had that experience. They'll welcome Oscar Allen back. I understand that. But... You shouldn't be losing by 263 points combined in your two worst losses for the year. You know, North's two worst losses of the year, I think, are still under 200. So it's not good enough. And, you know, I'm letting North off the hook here a little bit because they're shit with a shit list and a list that needs improving. Um, if they want to get me involved in list management, I can absolutely do that because it's a no-nonsense approach and this whole build from the midfield out is ridiculous. But West Coast, I'm not happy with them, and you can take your Vic Bias and stick it. Uh, the Bulldogs. Still missing a centre-half forward and still missing a centre-half back. That hasn't changed. I get that you might think it's harsh. I can completely understand where you're coming from. Can they make finals? They probably can, but I'm saying they're not there until Josh Bruce is back with some continuity and they figure out who's going to be... The good centre half back. Tim O'Brien's been eh, but he's a third back. Uh, Gardner and Cordy, I don't buy at all, but I'm going to put the doggies there. So those are my rankings, guys. What do you think? Comment below. Let me know. Let me know what kind of videos that you guys want. Um, if you want to check out the Great Footy Debate, the full link uh, is going to be in the comment for the next show. So I look forward to talking all that. That happens on Sunday nights. And when we can get out live to radio, I'll get all those links there. See you guys can listen in and enjoy. But until the next video, guys, be safe, be well. Goodbye.